Hi, my name is Nick, and this tooltip is on wall properties. The walls in Envisioneer have a great deal of functionality associated to them in the properties of the wall. Not only can you adjust the size and appearance of the wall, you can also adjust how the wall will be displayed and quantified. We're going to take a look at the properties of a wall by simply selecting a wall in our model and double clicking on it. This will bring up the wall's properties dialog box. And the first thing we're going to look at is the basic tab. And what we're going to see here is the first option is type. And depending on the type of wall that you're going to be constructing, you can choose that type from this list. And as you can see, there is a general wall type, a framed wall type, concrete, masonry, girt, and log. The most common wall type you're going to find in a visioneer is going to be framed. And depending on the type of wall you're going to be using, this can be either a wood framed or a steel framed wall. If you're going to be adding in just a poured concrete wall, you would want to use your concrete option. If you're going to be creating a masonry wall, you would use the masonry option. The general option is a great option if you're going to be creating a remodel project and you don't want anything to be quantified. You would just use the general option here and that would omit any framing associated to it. Underneath this, you can see that we have a property section. And under the property section, we can see the core. And the first option we see here is width, and it's set to five and a half inches. This core width is going to be the thickness of your core. So whatever your framing is for that particular wall, that is what this should represent. And we're using a two by six brick wall, so our core width is five and a half inches. Underneath that, we have an invisible M2D. And this option is disabled by default. But if you happen to have an area where you don't want to show the wall in your plan view, but you do want to be able to see it in a 3D view, you would select this invisible M2D option, and the wall would not be visible in your 2D plan views. The next option we see is exterior surface. And this controls how the exterior of your wall is going to be created. So as you can see here, we have a width and an airspace option. So the width is going to determine the thickness of your exterior veneer. And that is going to be set to 3.5 inches for our brick. Our airspace is going to constitute the thickness between our wall and our exterior veneer. And we have our set to 1 inch. The lower exterior face bottom and Raise exterior face top options will allow you to extend that exterior surface up or down to cover your floor above or your floor below. And we have our set to 11 and a half inches for our lower exterior face bottom option by default. If you're going to change the thickness of your floors, you will also want to make sure that you adjust this option in here to make sure that it's covering that adjustment in your floor thickness. Next, we have the left and right interior surface option. And what these options do is it allows you to control the interior line of your wall. So if you have an interior surface on the left or right hand side, it is going to be by default half an inch thick. You can adjust this so that it represents a thicker drywall material, or you can also adjust the actual airspace. So if you wanted to add in a furring strip between your wall and your drywall, you can adjust that by adding in the airspace option. As you can also see, there is a force surface to be exterior on both the left and right side. So depending on the way the wall was drawn in, you can determine what the left and right side of that wall is going to be. And as you can see here, when I have my wall selected, I see my green dot, my blue dot, and my red dot. And the best way to describe this is, picture yourself standing at the green dot, looking at the red dot. If you're standing here, looking in this direction, this would be the right-hand side of your wall, and this would be the left-hand side of your wall. By selecting this force to be exterior, you're going to apply that exterior veneer that we have up here, to the left or right side of that wall. This comes in handy if you're creating a wall on the exterior that's only one wall but you want it to have a exterior veneer all the way around it. You would use this option to apply that veneer all the way around the wall. 
we also have a framing options area. And the framing options, since we can control how a wall is framed based on if it's load bearing or non load bearing in our building locations, this option will allow you to set it to auto, yes, or no. Auto is used by default because it will look to see if a wall is exterior, and if it is, it will be defined as a load bearing wall. All the interior walls will be defined as non-load bearing walls when set to auto. So here you can go through and simply adjust a individual wall to represent a load bearing or non-load bearing wall. We also have an energy section and the energy section will allow you to set up the energy calculations for your wall for the export to the ResCheck application. So in here you can control the R value for your walls and that will be taken into consideration when you export it out to ResCheck. We also have a framing member option. So since we have framed select as a type, we also need to specify our framing member. And when I select the framing member option, it will bring up the catalog access and allow us to define the framing member we're going to use for that wall. Again, we're using a 2x6 wall, so I'm going to be selecting a 2x6 member. And when I double click on that, it's going to allow us to see that it's using a 5.5 inch by 1.5 inch thick member. The other area of interest is the purchased items. So under the purchased items, it's going to allow us to define what members need to be purchased for what parts of the wall. So here you can see we have a 2 by 6 by 92 and 5 8 stud. And that is only going to be used for stud material. And as you go through the list, you can see we have a 2 by 6 by 8 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot. Each of these are different purchased item lengths that you can purchase from a lumber yard, and they will be able to be used for different parts of your wall. I'm just going to click cancel on that and cancel on that because I don't want to make any adjustments to it. And then I'm going to switch to the top and bottom tab. So the top and bottom tab will allow you to control how your wall tops and your wall bottoms are going to be displayed. Under the wall tops, we have an option for level, slope, step, and auto extend. And by default, most of your exterior walls will be set to auto extend. This is done on purpose, so that way whenever you draw a wall in and you add a roof into that design, and you turn that into a gable end, the wall will automatically extend up to the gable end roof to fill in that void. And that is controlled by this option on the right hand side. Exterior wall tops to roof, we have this set to 6 inches. So it's not going to extend it all the way to the top surface of the roof, it's going to extend it 6 inches below the top surface of the roof. And that's how you fill in your gable ends. If you don't want that to happen, you can simply select level and define the level height that you want for that wall. And then you can apply a different wall in the gable end of your design to add in a different look. So you could have a hardy board siding over top of a brick wall in a gable end. We can also slope or step the top of our walls depending on what type of design we are creating. And these options, again, are going to be relative to how the wall was drawn in. So you have your start point and your end point, And then you can apply the actual variables that you want to create that slope or stepped look. The wall bottom is also going to give you the same controls, where you can keep the wall bottom set to level. Or again, you can slope the wall bottom or step the wall bottom. If you're creating a stepped foundation, you could use the stepped option here to step the bottom of your wall. Or if you're just creating a decorative wall, you can also slope it or step it as needed. The trim tab is where you're going to go when you want to add in the trim to your walls. So adding in trim is going to be done based on the application or the side of the wall that is going to need the trim. So as you can see here, we have a left interior surface, a right interior surface, and an exterior surface. Anytime a wall has an exterior veneer or a closed circuit of walls, it will be the exterior side. On this particular example that we have selected here, if I wanted to apply trim around just a part or a crown molding to this part of the wall, it would be to the right hand side because again, I'm standing at the green dots looking at the red dot and that is going to be the right hand side. So I would select the right interior surface and I can now go through 
and define a crown molding, a chair rail, a different baseboard, a different opening, or a different windowsill to that wall. And as I scroll through, there are a couple of different options I can adjust as well. Creating a custom, so for something like a wainscot paneling, I can apply that here. I can also add in a different window head or a different door head material to create a different cap for my openings. And this is going to be true for, again, not only your right side, but your left side and your exterior side. On the Appearance tab, this is where you're going to be able to go to adjust how the wall is going to look in your 3D exterior or interior views. So here we have our exterior surface and our left and right interior surfaces. So what color paint do we want on the interior? What type of material do we want on the exterior? What color do we want to paint our opening? So anytime we punch a door or a window or a framed opening through a wall, what color do we want that opening to be? These are all things that you can control in your 3D environment. The line work tab is where you're going to go to be able to adjust how that line work is going to look in your 2D views. So again, how is your exterior surface going to be displayed in 2D? How is your left and right interior surface going to be displayed in 2D? And as you select these, you can see that the option does change and you can adjust each one of these individually. Another area that you can control is the actual pattern. So if I was to insert an elevation of this view and I wanted to show it as a pattern view, what pattern do I want to display on that exterior surface? And since we're working with a brick wall, we actually have the brick pattern assigned to that exterior surface. The last tab is the quantity tab. And the quantity tab is going to allow you to break this up in a couple of different areas. So under the quantity section, here you can go through and you can define the manufacturer if there is one for that particular wall. You can also set up a supplier. You can add in your pricing here if you want to price out what a wall would cost per linear foot if you wanted to. We can also adjust the actual phase. So the phase is going to be uh, how that wall or when that wall is being used. So right now this is a wall framing option uh, because this is going to be a framed wall. The category is set to walls because that is what we are creating is a wall. We have ours broken down into a division with a part number and we have an alt code for sorting. We also have a usage. So in this particular case this is an exterior wall so it's going to have an exterior finish and it's going to be set up by square feet. We also have an include in quantities and a replace with assemblies option. So in here we have this set up so that it's going to be included in the quantities. So if I run a quantity report, this information will be taken into consideration. But instead of using this option, these options here, it's going to replace it with what is in the assemblies. And that brings us to what our assemblies are. And assemblies are basically groups of components that make up the wall that you're creating. So you can't physically go out and buy a 2x6 brick veneer wall. What you do is you create that wall from different components. So we have ours broken down into individual assemblies. So here we have our brick construction assembly. This takes care of everything that has to do with the brick. So this is the common brick, the mortar, the mortar sand, and the wall ties. We also have it broken down into our sheathing with the house wrap. So here we're going to see our house wrap, the sheathing tape, the 716 4x8 OSB sheathing, our pneumatic sheathing stick nails, and then our staples for our house wrap. We then have on the interior side our drywall. So how much drywall we're going to use of the half inch 4x8 drywall sheets, the joint tape, the compound, and the drywall screws. We then have our insulation with our vapor barrier and our staples. We have our framing nails and then we have our paint and primer. So all of these components together make up that wall. And that's why we have this set to say replace with assemblies. By adjusting all of these under our properties of our wall, we are able to create a very finished looking wall that is not only visible in 3D with the specific materials, but also in 2D to denote the actual elements that are being used, 
and then in our quantities to show the individual assemblies that make up that wall. We hope this tooltip helps you moving forward. If you like what we're creating, be sure to subscribe for future videos. If you have comments, please let us know below. Thank you.